Hey, my name is Bram and in this series I'm talking with inspiring and motivational people who push the boundaries of what's possible with or without a disability. Doing sports changed my life and the way I view myself. I hope this series will help you to do the same. Hi, uh, my name is Bram and I'm doing an interview with uh, Noah and uh, can you tell something about yourself? Yeah, uh, so I'm Noah, I'm here from Master, 21 years old um, and in the summer of 2017 I went on a holiday with two friends of mine and I had a scooter accident and I lost my leg in that, oh yeah, eventually, it went like we had the accident and then I went looking for help in three hospitals and yeah, they basically told me I didn't have anything. So after five days of basically dying, uh, yeah, I lost my leg and then I came back to the Netherlands where I found a new passion, a new dream in uh, track and field, actually track. So now I'm trying to uh, get to the Paralympic Games and win, uh, win a medal. Nice, nice, very inspirational. Um, so, and um, what I was wondering about, like, um, my situation is I was born with my uh, disability, so I get to live with it day by day, but was it a hard uh, transition for you to adjust to having uh, two legs or two no legs? And uh, yeah, how was that like uh, to suddenly need to walk with a yeah. prosthesis and yeah. stuff? Yeah, it was hard for sure, but uh, everything after the accident was relative, so relatively less hard mm. um, because of the f those five days of surviving really. But uh, when you look at it, basically you have to learn everything again. Everything like walking, planning your day, uh, going out with friends. Uh, I had a lot of pain. Mm. I need to consider the prosthesis as a extra part of me that needs to be taken care of mm. so uh, how do you take care of your, uh, uh, your so you visit the prosthetist regularly mm. um, I try to feel what needs to be better try to learn um, what mm, if you feel something what it means uh, so they can adjust it and it takes a long time so it's a long process and yeah once it's finished, you can almost already start again. Yeah. Because your body changes all the time, especially in the first months. So. Yeah. And uh, now you're training a lot. Uh, do you need to diet as well, like really strictly, or is that so, uh, not really a problem? No, I eat healthy. Um, I've been eating healthy since I started fitness. Mm. So that, and that was in 2016, I think. And. Um, uh, I think I'm doing quite a good job, but actually, yesterday, um, mm. uh, just by coincidence, I had my first appointment with my uh, personal strength coach that yeah. we're going to get into uh, next year, and also with uh, a dietist there. Yeah. So we're going to look for a better meal plan next year. Nice, nice, and. Um, do you need to get like a lot of sponsorships or anything like that or is it um, like how do you pay for everything in um, the, the trainings and stuff? Yeah, that's, there's no real need I think but um, the support that I, I got at first for my first running leg, that, that, was, that was a need for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the insurer doesn't pay for it so I had to collect the money from uh, all over the country and that turned out well mm. and after that I I showed my uh, my qualities and 
I think things came back to me and then uh, now I'm in quite a comfortable comfortable position. Mm. Okay, and um, what I was wondering, like, uh, do you have like this um, motto or this thing you live by? Like, do you have something to uh, say to other people? Like, uh, like some sort of way your uh, life, your life changed like bigly, you know? So like, uh, I think like, uh, do you have like this mantra that you say to yourself, like, oh, I'm going to push through this, or when you're having a difficult time, what's the thing that keeps you motivated yeah. to? keep striving um, for better. I believe that everything you say to yourself is what you're going to believe the most. So even if everyone says to me that I'm I'm shit and I'm nothing, yeah. then once you when you say to yourself you're the best, you can do everything, that's what you're gonna believe eventually because you are you. So Yeah. Um, and I think subconsciously that has always been something I did and I just kept on doing that, but uh, I don't know. I just I think I'm that's just me, and I just do the the things that come with those thoughts. Yeah. Um, and I believe when you set a goal and you believe in yourself, uh, then you can accomplish it. And even when you don't accomplish it, it's no problem because you, you still you tried. Come further than everyone else. Yeah. Um, Ah, that's nice. That's yeah, it. that's the. I think that's the best way to like approach these things. At least for me, it's the same. I think it's um, like m when you're competing, it's like more competing with yourself. You know, not with everybody else. It's just you need to shut off everyone else's noise and then just focus on mm -hmm. the thing that's ahead of so you. So in, in track, the competition is also what pushes you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it helps. Yeah, really. Like when so I I read somewhere that when someone is like running in front of you, you can actually go uh, a bit further and a bit faster is because they're running in front of yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's always easier to hunt than be hunted, mm. but also uh, like physically or in physics, mm. the the wind you have less wind because there's like a small windscreen in front of you. Yeah. Okay, and um, some other thing, yeah, you're studying medicine right now, so and is that something you always wanted to do or is this like a thing that you're actually more into because of the accident that happened to you? Um, I think I was, I've been more into it because of the accident, but it's always been something I wanted to do. Yeah. It's when I was, I think I was 10. I told everyone, yeah, I'm going to be a, a doctor. Mm. So if you want to be a doctor, you need to study medicine. Yeah. Um, and that was how I directed all my uh, academic choices. Nice. Um, and after the accident, it was a, uh, it was something that showed me how to to be a doctor, you a good doctor. Like uh, in yeah. Singapore, where I got my surgery, I had a really nice doctor. It was personal with me, we did a really good job, mm. saved my life, but in Indonesia, on the other hand, I had, uh, I don't know how many doctors, but they, they didn't do anything, Yeah. and they were really unpersonal, I don't know, like, it was really bad, yeah. so that was something that drove me to, to say I, want no, I don't want no one to go through this again. Yeah, you want to do better next time. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, do you experience any uh, difficulties with your uh, prosthesis, like uh, wh while studying? Because, like, when I'm in school, mm. um, it's actually sometimes a bit hard with things that they want me to do outside of school. You know, like field trips and stuff like that. Because mm. uh, I can't always uh, come along to everything because mm. this uh, this school doesn't have the uh, means to it. You know, and I I'm like uh, always seeking for the possibilities but then they say like it's not a possibility you know they decide for me but yeah. I don't know if it's the same for you because you can act, you, you can actually walk yeah. so I I don't have real problems anymore but like everything else at first I started studying two months after my accident or when was it yeah I think two months mm -hmm. or three months after my accident um, and at that time I was still learning to walk so I walked with a a wooden stick, yeah, not a wooden stick, but a stick. Yeah. Uh, the first 
weeks of, uh, of school and I was still needing to go uh, to the rehabilitation center every morning so at that time I couldn't uh, be in uh, the how do you say it the room where they have all the dead bodies that you can cut and yeah. stand there for two hours yeah or go to uh, yeah do have a trip with school yeah um, but now I don't have any problems anymore Nice, nice. So you can just do everything. Mm. Nice. Um, so and um, like, uh, do, do you view life differently now that after everything that happened? Like, I mean, um, for me, it's like I, I'm used to it. So it's not like I, uh, I, I see that I I'm a bit more mature than some people. You know, I'm I'm not like uh, uh, let's just. F uh, fucking drink every drink, weekend drink and, and fuck every yeah <laughs> uh, stuff like that <laughs> but yeah do, do you view uh, life differently like uh, were you a bit uh, different before or not at all yeah I think I haven't really changed as a as myself but I think the the driven side and the serious side came out more mm. but that's just because I found another big goal. Um, uh, but I, I saw that life can be gone in like mm. a second, and uh, everything you find normal here or in your daily, in your daily life is not no, uh, it's not normal. Can mm. also be taken away every second. Yeah, and and like these little things that little things that some people like cry about. It's not really that. Yeah. much of importance right yeah. like i mean not that i want to judge anybody because some people have like the uh they are lucky that they only have like a broken arm or yeah. something like that yeah. but when i see someone like crying about that i'm like okay but you're just going to the hospital and the yeah. next day it's fine you yeah. know but in our cases it's like okay i'm i'm in this wheelchair for a I think most of my life and it's just not going to be that um, much better you know but like in, in, in your case you're like it's not going to be magically re period, reattached yeah, yeah. like it's no yeah that was something I had problems with in my uh, in medical school as well mm. because we have to do like these fake conversations with uh, actors patients. yeah uh, and the first one was after I got back to university after the first two weeks or one week yeah. That person had a pro had a hurting elbow, <laughs> and at that time I was still oh, yeah. taking yeah. Uh, um, oxycodone, mm. which is uh, opioid, mm. like um, morph morphine. Yeah, it's morphine um, to just function <laughs> every day. Yeah, and uh, they were talking about their bruised elbow, and I was like, ah, I can't, I can't take this. And also, um, yeah, things are really. I, I, I didn't care at first. Everyone was talking about this and that and I, I was like I hear you but I'm not I'm not listening. Yeah. And I noticed that when I came back first I was like on another uh, wave than everyone else mm. but for you to be able to function in the society you 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 have to adjust adjust to, yeah. to everyone else because otherwise it's not going to work. Yeah, so, people are go not going to like you. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's something I I don't necessarily like because I appreciated life more the first few months that I got back from uh, from my accident. Yeah. Um, but it didn't allow me to function. I could if I would have been this had the, I would have had the same mindset now. Yeah. That I had then I wouldn't have been able to function now. Mm. Um, and yeah, I also noticed that I always didn't really want to be the guy that went out and drank and this and mm. that. Uh, but after the accident, it was also went almost to zero. zero yeah. yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, doing this with me. No problem. And uh, yeah, let's go and uh, train a bit. Bye.